Welcome to the Buddhist Boot Camp Podcast. Our intention is to awaken, enlighten, enrich, and inspire a simple and uncomplicated life. Discover the benefits of mindful living with your host, Timber Hawkeye. Salt is delicious, but using too much of it will ruin your meal. In the hands of a skilled surgeon, a knife can save a life, but it can just as easily end it. And activism is a powerful force that can be constructive if we are sensible, but activism can also be terribly destructive if we are careless. Mindfulness is the tipping point. And to be clear, I'm not suggesting there's a right or wrong way to go about it. My concern, as always, isn't so much with labels such as Buddhist or Christian, for example, but whether our behavior is Buddha-like or Christ-like. So I offer some reflections and questions for you on this divisive topic on how Buddhists can be activists. Since compassion is meant to fuel our actions, many Buddhists believe it is their duty to participate in social activism on a large scale. There is an ever-growing gap, however, between what the Buddha taught and some people's modern interpretation of the teachings. So I wonder whether radical activism is aligned with Buddhism or if it actually goes against it. Just try to picture the Buddha rioting, and you will catch a glimpse of the large spectrum of activism and why, without certain parameters, there is such a thing as too much salt, so to speak. At the core of Buddhist teachings is the Eightfold Path to End Our Suffering. This means certain thoughts, livelihood, speech, and actions are conducive to our liberation, which includes mindfulness, concentration, peace, and serenity, while other patterns are detrimental to our freedom from suffering, such as ill will, worry, and doubt. So, can Buddhists be activists? I think it depends on whether we are able to remain peaceful and calm while we do it. The moment we slip, we may still be guided by pure intentions, but we have definitely veered off the path. There is no doubt the Buddha urged us to never be passive in the face of injustice. Thich Nhat Hanh called his own approach engaged Buddhism, but he did so with a stern warning. Do not be bound to any doctrine, theories, or ideologies, even Buddhist ones, he said. They are meant to guide you, but they are not the absolute truth. He went on to say, do not think the knowledge you currently possess is changeless. Remember to practice non-attachment and do not force others to adopt your views, especially children, but rather help them renounce fanaticism by renouncing your own. Do not close your eyes to suffering, but find ways to be with those who suffer. And do not accumulate wealth while others go hungry, but rather share your time, energy, and resources with those who are in need. Perhaps most apropos to this episode's topic, do not maintain anger, he said. Understand the nature of hatred and only plant seeds of peace and joy. Even Thich Nhat Hanh, who is considered by many to have been a global activist, expressed how important it is to never utter words that can create discord or cause the community to break. It is a delicate balance to simultaneously stand against oppression, yet not engage in partisan conflicts. I believe it's because the Buddha spoke of modest compassion, where you are actually able to help with humility and cultivate calm, not aggression. But how do we determine what's within our scope to actually help? Is being peaceful in our daily interactions enough? Is philanthropy enough? And if so, according to whom and by what measure? More importantly, at what cost? We must have compassion for ourselves, after all. It's important that you don't make yourself sick trying to heal the world. A candle does not lose any of its brightness when it lights another. And while I don't have an answer, I would like to offer a gentle reminder. As civil servants, we must remain civil. If you want to determine where the line is drawn between modest compassion and confrontational hostility, take inventory of your state of mind when you are engaged in social service. Are you loving, calm, and tranquil? Not to the point of setting yourself on fire the way monks did in the 60s to protest against the war, but in the way Martin Luther King and Gandhi practiced nonviolence. What I mean is, don't be cruel in your fight against cruelty. Your life is your message. To that end, the famous starfish story is a perfect example of modest compassion. I'm sure you've heard it before, but here it is again. When the storm ended and the tide rolled out, thousands of starfish were left on the beach. An old man was walking along the shore when he saw a little boy tossing a starfish back into the ocean. What are you doing? asked the man. The boy threw another starfish into the water and replied, When the sun comes out, it will dry and kill the starfish. The old man frowned and said, But there are thousands of them. What difference does it make? And that's when the boy leisurely picked up another starfish, tossed it into the waves and said with a smile, It made a difference to that one. When the Buddha spoke of compassion, modesty, and humility, I believe that's what he had in mind. Relieving suffering that is within your scope to achieve in small scale without any attachment to outcome. 
Chapter 13 of Faithfully Religionless is called Instrument of Peace, in which I wrote, If changing the world is your fight, it will leave you exhausted. But if changing the world is your way of life, it will be effortless. We all silently condone or oppose violence in almost every decision we make on a daily basis. It may not be grand or ambitious, but who says activism has to be? Isn't rescuing a single starfish enough, especially if we each vow to save one? As the Dalai Lama said, if you can help, then help. But if you can't help, at least do no harm. Just remember, as civil servants, we must remain civil. That's how we can be Buddhists and activists at the same time. Some would say that me writing books and having this podcast is a form of activism. I just hope it's like helpful rain on a thirsty crop rather than a downpour that drowns everything in its path. I believe the key is to promote what you love instead of bashing what you hate. We are soldiers of peace in the army of love, and we are in this together. Timber Hawkeye is the best-selling author of Buddhist Boot Camp, Faithfully Religionless, and The Opposite of Namaste. For additional information, please visit BuddhistBootCamp.com, where you can order autographed books to support the Prison Library Project, watch Timber's inspiring TED Talk, and join our monthly mailing list. We hope you have enjoyed this episode and invite you to subscribe for more thought-provoking discussions. Thank you for being a soldier of peace in the Army of Love.